<laughs> Let, let's turn a little bit now to what is happening this week. I mean, you know, we talk about that upsets happen in college football. They happen all the time. They come out of nowhere. You can't look ahead. This Penn State team, where it is right now, you know, Urban Meyer said this week that going into to Happy Valley, it's one of the top five atmospheres he's played in, and this is a guy who's played in great atmospheres in the SEC. I can't, it's hard to picture how this is going to matter because when we looked at this game before the season, you looked at Christian Hackenberg. Yeah. You looked at, this was a guy who was a good quarterback as a true freshman last year, came to Ohio Stadium and was overwhelmed, was not ready for that. Okay, now he's going to be a sophomore. Maybe he'll be ready. Does this look like a guy who's going to be ready for this Ohio State team? No, this doesn't look like a, a guy or a team that's going to be ready for Ohio State to come into Beaver Stadium on Saturday. And it, I think it, starts and, and, and ends kind of with <coughs> the Sorry. offensive line. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah if you cough, cough yeah. that way. Yeah, cough, cough on, on Barry. Thank you. Barry O. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, think, I think the problems with Penn State start and end on the offensive line, and you're seeing a ripple effect with Christian Hackenberg because of that. I mean, he's a guy that's been talked about as a potential number one overall pick, if not at least a top ten pick in the draft whenever he decides to come out. And statistically, he's one of the worst quarterbacks in the country this year because of the struggles they've had up front. I'm going to ask Ari Condi a question here. JT Barrett has 20 touchdown passes and five interceptions this year for Ohio State. Guess what Christian Hackenberg's touchdown to interception ratio is for Penn State? 13 to 6. You know this. I do. How many touchdown passes has Christian Hackenberg thrown this year? In one more game than what Ohio State has played so far, right? How yeah. many touchdowns? Five. He's thrown five touchdown passes Wait, the whole what? year and seven interceptions. A guy who is the prototypical NFL passer that people think is a future first-round pick. He's completed 59% of his passes. His quarterback rating ranks 11th in the Big Ten. 88th in the country. 88th in the country behind not only JT Barrett and Connor Cook, who are at the top, and Gary right. Nova, who just – did nothing to impress us no. against Ohio State last week for Rutgers. is third in the quarterback rating in the conference. Gary Nova. C.J. Brown, who did nothing to impress us as the Maryland quarterback the game before, is 10th, one spot ahead of Christian Hackenberg. Is there anything that you think this Penn State team can do at home in prime time to give Ohio State a game? No, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm like, we kind of talked about this a little bit, and, you know, we're not giving any advice here. But I am stunned that the spread of this game is less than 14 points. Well, I'm absolutely baffled by it. <coughs> Do we have cough buttons? <laughs> I don't think we have cough buttons on the set. I feel like I took TV classes in college. I just need you, you like to a cop a cough button. What does that do? We need to have like mugs. I have a Cleveland.com mug at my house. I'm going to start bringing so I can drink water. I'm, I'm dying here. I have, I have a bowl of Why don't you try to lock it up? 63-14 last year. Yeah. This Penn State team's not as good. How much no. is right? This this no. Penn State team is worse than the team that lost 63-14 last year. The question I have is how much is home field advantage worth? We were talking about this in the drive up. I feel like home field advantage comes into play more for teams that aren't used to it, for teams that are good teams that are entering sort of a new realm. I mean, when you're a team like Ohio State, when you're a top-tier team, when you're Michigan State, when you're Oregon, when you're Alabama, I mean, every game is a huge game. Every time you play, it's a huge, hyped-up thing. I mean, you play in a huge stadium yourself. Penn State's crowd. Uh, is it going to make a difference? I mean, Maryland was like 55,000. And I Urban mean, Meyer yeah. noted that. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I think that home field advantage is the most overrated thing in the world because if they, Penn State can't physically match up against Ohio right. State, I don't care how loud people are screaming. But JT Barrett has played in one huge game in his entire career in front of a huge crowd, and it was a home crowd, and he wasn't ready for that environment yet. And that was a Virginia Tech game. And, and I guess and if you count saw, Cincinnati. I mean, but, Christian Hackenberg was a, was a decent quarterback last year, and when he came yeah. into Ohio Stadium last year for that game, looked like he wasn't ready so, as a young quarterback. Because to me, that, what, like, the game I'm trying to play in my head is if Ohio State were home this week, what would the spread be? Well, but the, the, the question is, with, with, with J.T. Barrett, was he, and you wrote about this, that he said Saturday after beating Rutgers that he did not prepare as much as he needed to for that Virginia Tech game. Was that the Virginia Tech defense that got him, or was that how much of that was big game, prime time, 8 o'clock? I feel like it was more about what the defense did and what yeah. he wasn't ready for, not 
whether I, it was a big game. And I don't think that he's going to struggle because it's a loud atmosphere. I don't think so either. I, I don't think it's just going to be like, I can't handle all these white shirts. How am I going to play the game? I, I, maybe he'll miss a throw or two. Maybe he'll And he missed some slow, throws last week, yeah. Slow to adjust to the new environment in the first quarter. But I think when you get between the lines and Ohio State has the talent and depth that Penn State just doesn't have because of the scholarship reductions, there's nothing that the crowd is going to do to right. make Ohio State not play good football well. And that's why, I, I mean, I personally... I mean, we're going to get in our outrageous predictions. I don't want to give anything away, but like, what I think Ohio State's going to do seems will probably be pretty outrageous. Too. Well, and it's interesting. We've written a lot about James Franklin in his first year at Penn State. Really, the battle that is happening right now with Penn State, Ohio State, is not going to be what's on the field Saturday. It's, it's, it's happening in the recruiting world right now because if this is about James Franklin getting Penn State ready to compete in games like this down the line, this is the low of the scholarship penalties yep. right now. This is the most depleted roster we're going to see at Ohio State, uh, excuse me, at Penn State. You know, we, we can see, and you're going to write about this this week, we can see what James Franklin is building. This is not it. What is the biggest matchup you think when you think about this game? What is the biggest thing that Ohio State may be able to take advantage of in this game? The biggest thing they can take advantage of, I think, um I think is it a, against that? Yeah, that it's, it's against the offensive. Yeah, State? it has to be against the offensive line. I mean, I think Christian Hackenberg got sacked four or five times against Michigan, and we've seen how bad Michigan's been this year. He's been under pressure every game against teams like Akron and UMass. He was still under pressure with that offensive line. So uh, Ohio State's defensive line, we've talked about it a bit, maybe hasn't performed as well as some people thought it would this year. I think this is a game where whoever's up front can get after it. Be a little of this. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of that. And then, and I think there's going to be a. Some of this from Christian Hackenberg because yeah. he has not reacted well, and Dave Jones, our friend at PennLive.com, has written about that. Some of the body language from Penn State, and Christian Hackenberg in particular, reacting to tough situations has not been good this year. And if you get frustrated in the team, against the teams they've played so far, I don't know what you're going to do if Joey Bosa's in your grill.